very special way. Do you know about Julian Assange? You know, I, I'm just not going to engage in that conversation. My job as the manager here is just to, to have the patio and the, the inside cafe is just a 10 minute Oh, for 10 minutes, it's fine. Yeah, and no then I'll stand up for not one, 10 seconds and sit back down, right? Hey, I don't think whatever other agenda yeah. you're trying to get done also includes harassing these nice ladies. I just, I just want to make that clear. Because you, you think that you're actually trying to do something nice, but you're actually making but their you lives hard. Not doing anything nice. You have a good day, sir. You're nasty. Go away. Yeah, we're here because uh, this is the second day of the extradition hearing of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. And he's in a, a prison in London. And the U.S. is, uh, first they tried to kill him in the Ecuadorian embassy because he published a lot of things that particularly the Democratic Party was uncomfortable with. The fact that how they uh, created uh, Russiagate and how that whole story of the laptop thing was, uh, you know, was suppressed by the Democratic Party and the FBI. And, uh, uh, you know, Podesta's emails and all that got revealed. Plus, the other, another thing is that the CIA asset, uh, Navalny, um, who, uh, they had, he got evidence of that in Wiki WikiLeaks so that, um, you know, so that we knew that he was just, uh, you know, the guy that just died in prison there was part of a whole uh, operation. Uh, trying to overthrow the, you know, the CIA trying to overthrow the Russian government. And, um, which is why he never was popular as a political figure, because everybody assumed he was just a uh, U.S. stooge. But, um, the, but then uh, all, the most dr damaging, which finally got, probably is why they went after him, is the video called Collateral Murder, where he showed uh, helicopter gunships but this is from Chelsea Manning, who was at the time Bradley Manning, uh, presented um, uh, a video, gave him lots and lots of inf information from the U.S. military of massacring civilians in uh, Iraq. So they want, uh, the U.S. government wants to put him in prison for life. Um, Pompeo actually, and, and, and oddly enough, Hillary Clinton, had a organ attempt, tried to promote a, an idea of killing him. Uh, so that, that, that they wouldn't have to go through this whole thing. But now he's like been in prison for five years now, I think. And uh, very harsh conditions. He's very, very ill. And he is not an American citizen. He's an Australian citizen who put up a website called Wiki, WikiLeaks where whistleblowers could anonymously provide information about corruption. So you have things like the Panama Papers showing Zelensky uh, involved in, in, in offshore bank accounts hiding billions of dollars before he was even the president uh, of Ukraine. Or, and, and even dirt on um, Putin and stuff, you know. So yeah, they, anybody had it. It was like unaligned with any political uh, perspective. He just publishing facts um, by whistleblowers about world corruption and now he's uh, he, he, if he's facing extradition and would get the Espionage Act uh, charged with that in the US so that's why we are here isn't that interesting uh, the, the former president also got charged with espionage yeah but uh, yeah, and then the same RICO Act against uh, uh, Trump was used against the 63 anarchists that were trying to stop Cop City. So it's like it's if you are uh, at all like considered an enemy of the government, they will go after you. They don't care whether you're a conservative or a left winger. And now it's so weird how now they. This was largely the Republican Party's doing, but um, to call Democrats left wing. I mean, God. genocide in, in um, Gaza. Um, now at least a half million dead in Ukraine after a US backed coup that was greenlit, according to Victoria Nuland, by B Vice President Biden. That, and all these conflicts that Biden is involved in and has initiated, if he initiated all of the world wars that are currently happening, um, you know, we're, we're going to end up like being nuked and killed and uh, if we don't rise up, basically, against both the Republican and Democratic Party. We have to have like a, we are not 
going to send billions more to Israel and to Ukraine, and we're going to like not threaten our future by supporting these uh, monsters uh, and, and, and that are running for election or in power already. It's also like the WikiLeaks expose how our our elections are not democratic. Or we don't really have elections. You know, they expose how the Democratic Party, they just uh, choose whoever they want to win the primary, and then that's all we get to choose in the general election. Then the Republicans do the same thing. We know that, too. So they just expose that, like, all the, you know, all the bombing that the U.S. does for democracy is obviously fraudulent because we don't even have democracy. We don't even support democracy here. So he, yeah, he showed that the emperor has no clothes in a lot of ways. So I know that they were doing a hearing yesterday, and then, I guess, you know what happened? Yeah, they were...
So anyway, so we're organizing a protest uh, to defend the rights of the homeless in Sacramento on Saturday, March 16th. Um, there's a series of laws like Senate Bill uh, 1011, which would essentially make it illegal to live outside in the state of California with the random exceptions of some place if you're lucky. And then the Supreme Court on April 22nd will be hearing um, really uh, Grants Pass versus um, uh, Johnson. Gloria Johnson, but that actually is a, a not, is also to get rid of um, Martin versus Boise, and so the governor of California, New, um, Newsom, and them all like lobbied uh, to have uh, have an appeal on Martin versus Boise, which what means that like you can't criminalize and and harass homeless people and and so on if you don't have enough places for everybody to stay. So that was in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in, in the Western uh, uh, Circuit. Now it's gone to the Supreme Court. And Martin versus Boise was ignored by the city governments across the country anyway. And so this only uh, looks like it'll be much, much more brutal. Uh, so it means like in, in, we think maybe the ruling might be in May. So then uh, Senate Bill 10, 10 uh, 11 will be sometime probably related to that. And then the uh, next thing will be, uh, um, there also there's a vote in this March uh, 4th to uh, intern 10,000 people deemed mentally ill by the state of California. So that's pending. So it's pretty clear that what I've been saying now for a number of years is that their plan is to intern all the homeless and uh, that's being nice, you know, because they're like, like Japanese internment camps, which the anniversary of was just yesterday. So, uh, so the, or of the signing of the executive order that interned Japanese Americans. So the, um, the, uh, but the worst thing I think is the fact that this entire thing I just described to you was coordinated by the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States. And so this is like a, a, a very ugly thing. So the same people that are organizing this are the ones that are waging wars in, uh, around the world. They're the ones that overthrew the Ukrainian government that has now resulted in the death of at least a half a million Ukrainians and estimates of maybe 200,000 Russians. And the uh, genocide within Gaza and the attacks on the bombing today in Damascus and Syria and the bombing of southern Lebanon, the bombings of Yemen, the sabotage, uh, these are the people that sabotaged the uh, natural gas pipelines in Iran last week, um, and they, they, this, this is uh, absolute madness that this uh, essentially a secret government, a secret government my grandfather, uh, uh, John uh, Vanderpool Phelan, was connected to are waging now in this like final so-called battle for the control of the empire and so uh you know this is all, all serious stuff and it's just like that saying first they came for the homeless but i was not homeless then they you know so that is what is happening so after they return the homeless there's going to be another group of people i would suspect muslims that will be interned next 
And then after that, it's going to be anybody that gives the government any hard time at all. So uh, this is, we need to fight back. This is like the new Nazi Germany, but in a whole other way, the system is the same. The jailing of, uh, of one of the most important journalists, Julian Assange, on top of, uh, of all this like matrix of uh, campaigns. We've been watching it step up, the, de the dehumanization of the homeless in the United States. If you are on nextdoor.com, you're gonna see endless tirades about human animals and we got to get rid of them and if you recall that's what the the uh, war uh, uh, war cabinet in Israel is calling Palestinians so if they can do that and kill nearly 30,000 uh, civilians in Gaza on live stream and get away with it the message is you got to obey the government and their orders even if it's not in your best interest, which is generally the case. I'm Keith McHenry. I'm the co-founder of Food Not Bombs. I'm the executive committee of the National Union of the Homeless. I'm in the Santa Cruz Homeless Union, and I'm also involved in an organization called Brave and Free, all three of which are fighting against uh, this fascism that we're facing now. And this is no time to be silent. Your life is at risk if you are watching this video. You can reach me at foodnotbombs.net if you want more information. Thank you. He's won more awards than any journalist on this planet, and WikiLeaks has never been found to be in error with any of their reporting. Nobody has found any harm caused by any of the releases from WikiLeaks, though you know they've tried. The deep state has tried and tried and tried. The best they could do, they found a couple women who had had sex with Julian. And then they twisted that whole story with a compliance state called Sweden. There's a lot of good-hearted people who think Julian, char Julian was charged with rape. They, they think that. It's not true. He was never charged with any crime. Anyway, that's a long story, but if you want to really know the secret behind that, Nils Melsger, Nils Melsger is the guy. He wrote a whole book blowing up that whole BS about the rape business and the Sweden thing. It's total garbage. Uh, Nils Melsger, by the way, is the UN Rapporteur on Torture who visited Julian Assange in prison with two very certified medical specialists in torture and they came out with a report that he was in serious danger of greater mental harm if he was not released and he has not been since that time but uh, anyway there are a lot of fine people who have covered this story, and I've only scratched the surface. But have sympathy. We have to all have sympathy for what Julian's going through. Um, because he's exposed, he's, he pulled back the curtain. And I was just watching a speech with Julian this morning. He was talking about one of the State Department memos, his favorite of all, I mean, and I don't know how many thousands were released. But, uh, Talk about Vote 7. Vote 7, well, you know, that's what, that was really, it's funny that Vote 7 wasn't really covered in much detail. I wonder why. Yeah, I, <laughs> don't mention that. But, oh, you, uh, I think, it, Nils Melsger did talk about that. This is, I'm telling you stuff because it's on the top of my head just from the last two days. You guys watch the, the live stream. I've been recording it. It may end today, actually. Uh, but there's a lot of things out there. Um, the CIA can kill you pretty easily and there's no traces left. Now, you know, I've always felt that that would be possible for, for decades now. It just makes sense with all the poisons and the shenanigans, these people. Oh my God, and what they're doing to Gaza now. I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to get too far off traffic, uh, topic from Julian, but I know if Julian were with us here today, he'd be talking about that. I can't believe 
not only what's going on in Gaza and Israel and Palestine and Lebanon and Syria and it goes on and on what is going on there is horrific but what's even crazy to be didn't we all grow up learning about Anne Frank my dad told me about the story of Anne Frank but you used to have to read that in school. I was 10 years old or something um, and then he started playing the records of the old music from the war, Spike Jones and Tefuro's face, you know. And we grow up, at my age, uh, learning about the horrors of World War II. We saw the photos of the, the pits full of bodies. And I visited Dachau when I was in Germany. Um, but it's one thing to read about historical events as horrific as they were. But to see day by day by day now in 4D color, um, I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna even talk about it because everybody. It's hard. It's very, very, very hard. Not only being confronted with the horror of war. But in some ways, the fact that people can go about their daily lives amidst this terrible tragedy and not seem to care, I, 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 I can't understand. I don't know what to do with that exactly, but to stand out here with you fine folks and pray, meditate, and, and feel our souls together, talk about it, and do it all again tomorrow. Free Julian Assange! Free Julian Assange! Free Julian Assange! <laughs> We must take it over. We must form our own networks of strength and mutual value. We can challenge those strengths and self-interested values of the world mongers in this country and in others that have formed hand in hand the alliance.
Reassad and the war! Reassad and the war! Reassad and the war! Reassad! Reassad! 